controlling fermentation temperature. It's difficult to overstate just how important this is to our yeast, and therefore to the overall flavor and excellence of our beer. Proper fermentation temperature can make the difference between good homebrew and amazing homebrew. Stressed yeast cells lead to off flavors. We've looked at using yeast starters to reduce the stress on yeast cells during the demands of a fermentation. Another really important environmental factor we haven't looked at is fermentation temperature. Every strain of yeast performs best within a particular temperature range. This range is determined through careful analysis by brewery trained microbiologists at the yeast suppliers and can be found with your kit recipe or on northernbrewer.com. Maintaining the fermentation temperature within this range will make your particular yeast strain happy. And as we know, happy yeast yield the best flavor and aroma, give their best attenuation, flocculation, and alcohol tolerance, and produce the minimum unpleasant tasting byproducts. For the great majority of homebrewers, the challenge of temperature control is not keeping fermentation warm enough, but keeping it cool enough especially for lager brewing. In this video, we will examine some ways to keep the temperature down while fermentation heats up. Three techniques we will demonstrate in increasing order of cost, sophistication, and effectiveness are passive cooling, relying on ambient temperature, and active cooling, using evaporation and using a chest freezer or refrigerator. First, ambient temperature. For some home brewers, this is an option during the cold months of the year, in an unfinished basement, or maybe on a three-season porch. However, if you live in a year-round warm climate or are brewing during summer, ambient cooling may not fly with our yeast population. Second, evaporative cooling, aka the swamp cooler. Put the primary fermenter in a tub of cold water, wrap it in a towel or t-shirt with the hem in the water. Finally, point a fan at the towel-wrapped fermenter. As the towel wicks water up the side of the fermenter, the fan evaporates the water. In our demonstration, we started at an ambient temp of 60 degrees and were able to reduce it by several degrees through the cooling effect of water evaporating. The third technique is a refrigerator or chest freezer with an external overriding thermostat. This is the most expensive option in terms of cost and space, but gives us the ultimate, most precise, and year-round control over the fermentation temp and therefore the flavor profile of our homebrew. Refrigerators tend to be cheaper, but chest freezers can hold more carboys. The thermostat, whether digital or analog, has a programmable set point temperature. Using the probe inside the fridge to monitor, the thermostat will cycle the compressor on and off to keep the temperature inside the unit within a few degrees of the set point. It goes without saying that this unlocks the door to lager brewing for many home brewers. A converted fridge or chest freezer can also double up for long-term cellaring of special bottles and yeast storage. Let's recap tangible differences fermentation temperature control will make to your beer. One optimal levels of fermentation aromas and flavors. Two, lower levels of off flavors from stressed yeast. Three, optimal fermentation performance, attenuation, flocculation, and alcohol tolerance. However and whatever you ferment, stay cool, home brewers. Mm -hmm.